When it comes to FPV, the foundation of every drone is the frame. And whether you're new to FPV or an experienced pilot, choosing the right frame can make a huge difference in how your drone flies. Even if you have a pre-built drone, also known as a button and fly, after you've crashed a thousand times, swapping to a new frame can dramatically improve its performance. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a frame from a relatively new company that's fresh out of the water. That's the Flyfish RC Volador 2 frame, which is designed for 5-inch freestyle. Now, when DJI released the O3 Air Unit, Flyfish RC, who are a relatively new company at the time, gained quite a bit of attention for having one of the very few frames that supported the camera on the O3 Air Unit. And I've been flying the original Volador frame for a few months, and you may have seen it featured in some of my videos. Now, the name Volador is actually quite appropriately named, as it's the name of an actual flying fish, which is found off the coast of California. So Flyfish RC are really leaning into the brand. Since the release of the Volador, Flyfish RC have put in a lot of effort into building and engaging with the community of pilots who fly their frames. I think this is an important distinction to make, because one of the things I see a lot from FPV companies is they tend to treat the people that buy their products as customers, not members of a community. So building a genuine community of pilots who use your products has proven to be a successful strategy. But one of the key things to building a strong community is listening to and taking on and applying the community's feedback, which is what Flyfish RC have done and have made several improvements to release the Volador version two. And they've also produced some new motors that come in a little bit of an unusual size. So for this particular build, I'm gonna be using the Volador two frame, 2406 motors 1950 kV combined with the Speedy B F405 BLS stack, Walksnail Avatar V2 for video, and Express LRS for the Radio Master RP1. Now, having built a couple of Volador's previously, I felt pretty confident about the build process, so I just got stuck right into it. During the build process, I noticed a few small changes which were based on this community feedback. The first and the obvious one was the inclusion of these aluminium washers that go on the bottom of the frame to protect the screws from damage when you hit the concrete. Now, typically I prefer countersunk screws into the frame instead of washers, but these are low profile washers and they aren't as obtrusive as what you'd find on other frames. Although I would have preferred switching to countersunk screws instead of button head as they sit a lot nicer in the washer. Then for the rest of the build, it was simply a matter of installing the Avatar V2 VTX and the Speedy B F405 stack for bolting on and soldering the motors to the ESC. Mounting the camera in the CNC camera plate, there should be no jello or jitters getting into the camera, especially if you're using DJI 03 or the Avatar V2 because of the silicon camera mounts that come for both 19mm and 20mm cameras. With the new TPU arm guards, not only are they lighter, but they sit around the arm and you don't have the motor screws going through the TPU mount, which adds to a cleaner setup. There are also two types of antenna mounts included, one with GPS and one without now, it. I use the GPS mount because it gives me the ability to mount the Express LRS antenna away from the frame where you'd normally bolt the GPS tray to. With the build complete and when putting on the top plate, I noticed a few more changes. To stop your battery impacting on the screws, they have now been countersunk into the top plate and you can now use any kind of battery pad because they've removed the recess. With all that done and the smoke stopper test passed, it was time for the usual setup and beta flight and flashing Express LRS before taking it out for a fly. On my first flight with the Volador V2, I crashed and it appeared that my flight controller was dead. So after taking it home, I found that I didn't actually push the plug between the flight controller and the ESC in all the way. And that meant in the crash, the plug came loose and the flight controller wasn't getting any power. But when fixing this, I also discovered another change and that's the XT60 plug is now reversible. So you don't have to have a twist in your battery leads and you can now align the battery plug with the battery pads on the ESC for a nice clean build. 
With all of this fixed and the connector swapped over, I took the Volador V2 out for another flight and this is what I found. Now, I couldn't tell the difference whether the 2406 motors actually had more power because I usually fly 1750 kV for freestyle and these being 1950 kV, they have a higher KV. That being said, the accepted theory is that a 2207 motor has more power than a 2306 because it's actually larger. So a 2406 being larger again would produce more power and torque, but also provide low to mid range control and smoothness of a 2306. I also normally fly a five inch freestyle with a 6S 1050 milliamp hour battery. And with a typically heavier build like the Volador, and especially one with high KV motors, to avoid sag and handle the sustained amp draw, you're gonna to want to have a larger battery. So I would think something around the 1300 milliamp hour to a 1500 milliamp hour 6S battery would actually be more ideal for this kind of build. Now, there are some further refinements I'd like to see in the Volador 2, which fortunately can be done quite easily. I'd like to see the screws for the bottom plate switch to countersunk, so they sit flush with the aluminium washers and button heads just look ugly. It would also be great for all the screws on the top plate, even for the GoPro mount to be swapped to countersunk, so there is consistency in the hardware, instead of having three different kinds of screws on the top plate. Then I'd also like to see Flyfish RC sell the aluminium washers and TPU kits in different colorways, so that way you can get a really clean and cool looking build. But Overall, how does the Volador V2 and the 2406 motors actually stack up? Well, when I'm looking at a frame or any FPV component today, because of how good everything has gotten and really there's only marginal differences in products these days. And for me, I can't really tell the difference. So I would probably think a typical pilot can't either. So what I'm really looking for is, are there any standout or obvious red flags or fatal flaws? and there aren't any. So if you're wanting to take on building a five inch freestyle drone and you don't know where to start or even how to start, well, watch this video here for the complete beginner's guide on building an FPV drone. I'm Darren Allen, until next time, don't forget to send it.